Hi, my name is Robert Lennart, and I'm going to try to show you how to use Microsoft Word 2011, how to use it as a desktop publishing program. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to Microsoft Word, and I'm going to open a new file from a template. And you'll already notice that on the right I have this file open, and it's one of the newsletter um, templates that comes with the program, and I'm going to show you which one it is. It's this one right here. It's called the school newsletter. And I've got it up on the right because I'm going to show you how we can manually recreate that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to templates. I'm going to select all and I'm going to double click on the word publishing layout. That's going to give me a blank um, file. And the, the only thing that they have in here is a box that's a, a text box. And one of the nice things about desktop publishing versus word processing is that everything you put on the screen is like an object. You can freely move it and position it anywhere you need it to be. I'm going to paste some text in here that I have, that I already had in my clipboard, and I'm going to move this text over to the side. This area off on the right is kind of like your um, pasteboard. You can put things that you're going to use later inside of your document. It doesn't print. It's just kind of like a storage area. And by the way, if you see this little white or this little blue A here, that simply means that you have more text inside the box and the box is capable, capable of displaying. It doesn't print, but I'm going to drag the box out so you can see all the text that's in there. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you how to quickly create all of the graphic elements that you see here on the right. I'm going to drag in a picture and I'm going to create these color regions and a second picture. The text down here I'm going to put in a chart and a title and, and we're not going to do anything particular. I'm going, to, I'm going to reuse this text kind of many times here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get a picture in here. So I'm going to come over to the my document and I'm going to go to the media browser and when I click it you'll see that these pictures come out on the right. If yours doesn't look, look like mine, hit clip art and then come down to all images and select photos on the bottom. And I'm going to drag this photo into my document. And the first thing you'll notice is that if I click on the inside, I can position it anywhere I want. I can resize it. And as long as you grab one of the corners, you'll do a, a proportional resize. If you grab one of the inside side boxes, you'll stretch your document or your, or your picture. So I'm going to undo that. What I want to do is I'm going to position my picture so it's roughly the same size as the picture with the dragon or of the picture with the boy with the dragonfly on his nose. So now I want to show you something. I'm going to drag another picture on top of this one, and what you'll notice is that it just lays another picture on the document. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to change the attributes of this picture so that when I move a picture over here, it switches just like it does with this picture. Notice how as I drag pictures from the media browser, these to switch. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to select this picture and I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to format picture and I'm going to click on layout and I'm going to hit the advanced tab and I'm going to click placeholder. Select OK, OK. Now, what you'll see is that if I drag a new picture over here, it's replaced. So I'm going to put my original picture back because I want this one. Now I'm going to create these color regions, this orange one, the green one, the blue one, and the light blue one. And I'm going to do that by selecting a shape, and I'm going to grab a rectangle, and I'm just going to drag a rectangle. And if I needed to, I could leave it over here on my, my pasteboard, but I'm going to bring it into my document, and I'm going to change a few things about it. By default, it has this light blue gradient that goes from darker blue to um, lighter blue. But I want them to be all solid colors like the one here on the right. So the way I'm going to change that is I'm going to double click. And this brings up the attributes for this particular object. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Effects. And I'm going to take off this little shadow that's kind of barely perceptible. But it's there. So I'm going to take that off. And then I'm going to go to my Fill and I'm going to create this orange color and the closest thing I have to orange is right here and I'm going to just select from my palette. Now I'm going to position this up in the upper left hand corner. I'm going to grab the side 
control box. And as I, as I slide this to the left and to the right, it clicks or snaps right to the edge of this other document. I'm going to grab this bottom control box and I'm going to slide this out until it snaps. So now I have the same size color region. Now, one thing that you might be able to see is this thin white line that separates all of these groups. Well, that's really nothing more than a, a thin border. I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to format the shape and I'm going to come up to line. I'm going to select white and I'm going to go to weights and I'm going to leave that 0.75 points because that's good enough. And what you'll notice is I have this thin white line. In fact, I can do the same thing on this picture. Right click, format the picture, go to line, make it white, go to the arrows or the weights and arrows and give it the same thickness. So I'm going to have this little white border all the way around the edge. Now I'm going to select this and I'm going to create these other color regions. And I'm going to do that by copying and pasting. And I could have done that with control C, control V. Now what I've got is another text box. I'm going to slide it up till it snaps to the grid and I'm going to move it up till it snaps to the picture above and you'll see I've got that little white gap in there. And now I'm going to grab the bottom control box and I'm just going to eyeball it so it looks roughly the size of this blue box over here. With it selected, I'm going to go back to my home tab. Um, actually double click so I get the attributes. I'm going to go back to fill and I'm going to pick a color that's roughly that blue, close enough. And now I'm going to Command C, Command V. I'm going to copy that, move that over here, slide this to the left and to the right. And I'm going to fill it with the closest green I can find. Let's make it probably a little bit darker. Let's see, probably right there. Good enough. And now I'm going to get this light blue. So I'm going to copy and paste this box because it's already the right width. And I'm going to slide this up and bring this down. Now I've got pretty much the color elements I want, except I need this one to be lighter blue. So I'm going to fill this with a much lighter blue. And let's see. Um, I think I've got everything that I need right now. Let's see what I want to do now. I'm going to add a chart in here. So I'm going to come over to charts and I'm going to click on a clustered column. And what you're going to notice is that it just opened up Microsoft Excel. And it actually brought in. There we go. Now, here's the spreadsheet that corresponds to the graph. And I'm going to hit Command Tab and I'm going to go back to Word. You'll see this bar graph that's in here. Well, I'm going to go back to Excel and I'm going to close this document. And I'm going to get rid of right here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to delete this column and this column. And the ones that are left, I'm going to change the word series to, um, how about we call it GPA, grade point average. And if I command tab and go back to the program, what you'll see is that is my um, header. And I'm going to change these categories to where it says category one, two, three, and four. I'm going to change category one to um, hours studied. So we're going to make this GPA versus hours, hours studied. So I'm going to say if we study one hour, and I'm going to click in the GPA column here. I'm going to change this number from 4.3. If you study one hour, uh, you get a 1.3 GPA. I'm going to hit return. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to click on the category two and I'm going to change that to two. And let's put the label HR hours. And let's go back to where I had one here and change that to hours also category three to three hours and category four to four hours and then as time studied goes up 1.3 to that's pretty good let's see we'll see we have an unweighted gpa so 
So now you have a 4.0. And as I command tab back to Word, what you'll see is I have a GPA. But I want to go back and I want to change this to GPA versus time. And we'll just say time. So close enough. Now, what you'll notice is that I have a graph that I can move about. I can put it in my pasteboard. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it back into my document. And I'm going to resize it. So I'm going to wait. There we go. I'm going to bring that in and position it right about there, my left-hand corner. I'm going to pull this out until it matches. When I click outside of it, I've got my GPA versus time bar chart. Now I'm going to take this text and I'm going to bring this text. I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to move it into my document. And I'm going to widen this out on both sides. And I'm going to bring it down to the top of that. Bring this down. Looks good. Now I'm going to put a title in there. So I'm going to get a brand new text box. So I'm going to go back to home, new text box. And I'm going to drag from this side to that side. And I'm going to double click in here. I'm just going to call this um, Arroyo in all caps, A-R-R-O-Y-O. -O. I'm going to select it all. And I'm going to go back to my Home tab. And I'm going to center it. Oh, let's see. Let's make it, um, let's pick a font here. Arial Black. That's a nice thick font. We'll make it a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, bold. We'll change the color of the font. We'll make it kind of green like the one over there. And we'll move the box up. Position this down a little bit. Click outside. Looking good. Now, this picture element right here, I'm going to bring in another picture. So I'm going to bring this one in. And I'm just going to drag it onto my document. You can see that it's bigger than I need it to be. So I'm going to position it right up here until it locks in or snaps into this area. I'm going to grab the bottom right-hand corner until my picture snaps. And now, let's see, I don't think it's snapped in, so I'm going to pull it out. There we go. Now it's snapped in. And what I want to do, in case I want to change this, I want to turn this picture into a placeholder also. So I'm going to right-click, Format Picture, go back to the Layout tab, Advanced, click Placeholder, and then say OK to everything. Now, should I want to change that picture to something else, I can do that also. I'm going to hit Command Z and go back to this picture. And now I'm going to finish this off. Actually, I like these butterflies over here. And on this picture, this should be up. What you'll notice is I'm clicking the butterflies in, in this predetermined uh, template that they gave me. I can't click them. If I come back over here to this bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that it's on a master page. So that means it's uneditable. But if I go to the master page, I can now copy this, come back over to my document, paste it, and I've got my butterfly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that in. And I'm going to come back and bring this document back, put it back together again. Now, the one thing I want to show you is I can add some attributes to this. So I'm going to right-click on this and go to Format. And I'm going to add a shadow. I'm going to click it. I'm not going to play with the shadow at all. I'm just going to show you that we can add a shadow. Now, I'm going to give it another title here. So I'm going to bring out a text box, and I'm going to drag it right there. And actually, let's undo that. Let's take this one that I've already used. Let's copy and paste it, bring it down here. And now I'm going to bring it and add it into this area. And I'm going to pull the sides in until it snaps. Double click, because I've already got an attribute there. So I'm going to change this from Arroyo to um, El Monte. And I'll highlight it all. We'll change the text color. We'll make it, this time, white. And we'll give it a different font. So let's give it, you know, let's see what looks good here. Something a little thinner. Oh, that doesn't look good, but we're going to leave it anyway. Okay, no, I can't leave it. don't like the way it looks. So let's change it to Apple Casual. 
There we go. Probably doesn't fit, but that's good enough. And let's say I've got Arroyo, I've got some text in here, and we need some text down here. So let's put in, let's reuse this again, copy, paste, and let's put that right here. And I'm going to double click in, I'm gonna get rid of some of my text, delete it, and whoops, let's make the text now italicized and let's make it kind of a light gray and I'm going to take off a little bit more of that and I'm going to bring my box up shorten that up and I'm going to align the box with the edge that way my text will be centered in there and let's put a little title so I'm just going to drag this down and this is something you can't do in a word processing document I can easily reposition these text boxes and the pictures and the graphics anywhere I want them to be. So I'm going to copy paste this one and double click. I'm going to select it all and I'm going to just turn this into a title and we'll just use the word inside just like the document on my right. I'm going to select it all and we'll use an impact font. We'll change the color to a dark blue and let's center this so let's go back here and center it we'll shorten the box up a little bit and position that right there now actually I want to show you something and actually I can't see the word inside here so let's make this bigger too big. Change it from impact to oh, what's going to work here. Can't see the font. So let's drag my box out and open this up. Who would have thought the word inside would be so hard to deal with? Let's get rid of the extra space. Inside, Command A, take italics off, and let's put it back. There we go. So, very quickly, I've got a graphic element or a desktop published document that has roughly all the elements. They've got the word date over here. So let's put let's put a date in and we need to put a text box. So I'm going to just drag a text box this time and I'm going to put today's date which is June 11th and we'll use a forward slash 11 forward slash 13. I'm going to select it all and I like impact because it's big and bold. We'll center it and let's make it white. There we go. And a little bigger. Click out. Now, by the way, if I select this and I use my arrow keys, I can position this within that graphic element. And I'm going to leave this green box empty and I'm going to end the video right here because I think you have a good idea of how this works now. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.